Do you understand what I've done for you? I have set an example that you should do as I have done to you. In that small sentence, Jesus sums up what we Christians are about in these three days. We're about remembering the sacrifice and the path of Jesus 2,000 years years ago. And we're about remembering and getting grounded in our own vocation as Christian community today in this world now as we go through these three days. Do this in remembrance of me, Jesus says as they gather around the table. Remember the life we have shared together. Remember the times that you've been inspired in following me. Remember the moments when you've seen my power, my healing power amongst the people. Remember those times when you've even gone out and been a part of my work in this world in my name. Remember that I am always with you. Remember that I will sustain you in difficult times, that I will help you and guide you if you will just listen. It's an invitation around that table for the disciples to remember that they are not alone. But Jesus is not just going to be with them in the spirit going forward. They can be there for one another. When Jesus takes the bowl and washes the feet of his disciples, he's telling them that they, like he, like God, can kneel before another brother or sister and see them for who they are and love them for who they are with all their limits and wounds and warts and can love them for who they are with all of their gifts and their courage and their purpose in life. Disciples going forward can kneel before one another Remind them of Jesus' promise that they are precious in God's sight. When Jesus breaks bread with his disciples, he commands them to do this always. Jesus reminds those disciples, and not just those disciples, but those who have gathered around the holy table for centuries since, those who gather around the holy table even today, that he is there to sustain them, to sustain us in the bread and the wine, in the sacrament of the body and the blood. But also, as we gather around the table, we can be sustained by each other. Do this for one another, Jesus says to the disciples. present for one another in the trials and the difficulties of life. Be together to give and receive strength from one another. Sometimes that strength is shared in a listening ear. Sometimes it's given in a small, tangible way in a meal or a ride. Sometimes we're there to Celebrate joyfully with one another, birthdays and anniversaries, celebrating that preciousness. Sometimes we're even joyously and sadly all at once together in a moment of death. In the next two days, we will meditate on the suffering of Jesus for the sake of the world. And we will put ourselves in prayer to pray for the sake of the world. 
we will awaken Sunday to celebrate the reality of Christ's victory over death, and we will live into our call to live joyously, reminding one another that the power of God often astounds us, even when the moment seems like a deathly moment. It's in holy relationship with Jesus and with each other that we find the strength to make the sacrifices we're called to make. It's in holy relationship that we can be truly Christ's presence for each other in the trying moments of life. It's in a holy relationship that we can celebrate joy of new life as it manifests itself in so many ways in each of our lives. Tonight, as we begin these three days, we're not gathered as we usually are. And yet tonight, in this strange year, and in the whole year past, we have found ways to be in holy relationship. We have seen each other's faces and heard each other's stories in Zoom. We have shared gifts and received gifts over YouTube. And even there's been an occasional encounter, encounter a personal encounter, where we actually see each other face to face. And we're reminded of the grace of what it means to really be foretaste of what's to come when this pandemic is over. And so, as we are distant from one another in these days, these strange pandemic days of Easter, may we still find comfort and strength, even as we lovingly refrain of getting together as a large community, and wherever you are, and whoever you're with tonight, whoever you break bread with, may you know the strength of Christ. May you take a moment to be Christ for one another, recognizing and loving all those around the table as Christ loves you. Touch them with a word of grace, or a smile, or an encouragement, or a gratitude. And if you're alone tonight, take a moment to reach out to those who share your broader table, even though you're not able to be at table with them tonight, to give and receive the grace of God, maybe a phone call. When Jesus sat at table with his friends that first Easter weekend, they wondered if this was perhaps the end. In the reality, it was only the beginning. The beginning of each of those disciples and all of those disciples and all the disciples who have come ever since. It was the beginning of them being Christ.